Hey, welcome to the Orange County Water District. My name is Mayhul Patel and I'm the Executive Director of Operations. And today we're going to take a tour of our groundwater replenishment system. But before we start, let me tell you a little bit about the Orange County Water District. The Orange County Water District is a special district created by the state of California to manage the Orange County groundwater basin. This groundwater basin serves 19 retail water agencies and a population of two and a half million people. And this basin provides 85% of the drinking water to those two and a half million people. And it's the water district's job to maintain this groundwater basin so it's sustainable and free from contamination. And what we're gonna see today is a key component to replenishing the groundwater basin, and that's our groundwater replenishment system project. And briefly, what the groundwater replenishment system does is it takes treated wastewater produced by another agency, the Orange County Sanitation District, that would normally be discharged to the ocean and puts it through an advanced treatment process consisting of microfiltration, reverse osmosis, and ultraviolet light with hydrogen peroxide, or what we call advanced oxidation. And then that water is introduced back into the groundwater basin and helps to replenish our groundwater basin supplies. Now come join us for a tour of the groundwater replenishment system. Okay, so we're here at the first treatment step. This is the microfiltration process. But before we describe that process, I'll give you a little bit of background on where the water comes from. So we receive water from the Orange County Sanitation District. They serve the same general service area as the water district, and they're in charge of collecting all the sewer flows, treating them, and then disposing of them in the Pacific Ocean. But instead, through a partnership with the Sanitation District, they send the treated wastewater to the Orange County Water District to then be reused as a source of replenishment for our groundwater basin. So here we are at the first treatment step, microfiltration. So behind me, you will see a series of below grade concrete basins. And inside each of those basins is 684 of these microfiltration membranes. They're essentially filters that we use in the first treatment step. And the way to think of these is they're like a drinking water straw. You can see they're made up of thousands of little fibers or straws. And the way this process works is it's just like a drinking water straw that you would use to take a drink with. But instead, the wall of the straw is filled with microscopic holes. The holes are so small, they're 1 300th the diameter of a human hair, or about 0.2 micrometer. And what we do is we pinch one end of the straw closed, and then we pull a vacuum or a suction, suck water into the holes that are on the side wall of the straw, and then the clean water accumulates in the hollow center. And then over time, the outside of the straw accumulates with all of the things that we're trying to remove. And specifically for microfiltration, we're trying to remove suspended solids, bacteria, protozoa, and a larger size microorganism. So it provides a nice like pre-treatment filtering step before we go to the next treatment step, which is reverse osmosis. Now you might ask yourself, don't these things plug up over time? And yes, they do. Over time, the outside will get plugged. So then these filters are meant to self-clean or self-backwash, where they'll just send water the opposite direction from the hollow center out through the side wall of the straws itself, and then remove the foulant layer that's on the outside. And the way we know it's starting to get fouled is it'll just take more and more pressure or more and more vacuum to pull the water through a fouled fiber versus a clean one. And then even with all of that self backwashing that happens every 22 minutes, it still will get so plugged that we won't be able to continue the same level of production without cleaning the filters themselves. So every three weeks, we clean them with a the chemical process using a low pH solution and a high pH solution that we just filter through like we would the normal water we're trying to treat. And that helps get the foulant layer off and then returns the performance of the filter back to its normal flow rate. So what we see behind us is a series of 24 basins, and we have two sides. So we have a total of 48 basins, each one containing 684 of these microfiltration membranes, and each basin can produce about 4 million gallons a day. And that's what allows us to treat enough water to ultimately produce 130 million gallons a day throughout this facility. All right, so now we're in the control room. So this is kind of the, the brain trust or the main area where we control the entire groundwater replenishment system. So because of the size of the facility, this 
facilities operated 24 7 365 days a year so there's always someone in the control room and typically during the day we have up to six operators and at night five operators and there's here to mainly control and operate the groundwater replenishment system. And the way that's done is through what we call our process control system. It's a computer system that you can see on the screen behind me that controls everything in a treatment facility. Not only does it give the operator information on how much flow we're producing, like we see in the various numbers on the screen, but it also lets the operator know if something's not operating properly and will give them an alarm. And then they have the ability to use the computer to drill down further and figure out diagnostically what might be going on. So this is similar to what you often refer to as a SCADA or supervisory control and data acquisition system. It's the main computer system that runs the plant. And this is really what makes the groundwater replenishment system state of the art, is that we can track thousands and thousands of pieces of information in real time and be able to, in real time, determine if anything's not working properly and in, at the end of the day, ensure that we produce the highest quality water. And one of the things that we wanted to point out during the tour is, we talked about earlier that the water goes into the Orange County groundwater basin to help replenish it. Well, it does that in two different ways. You'll see here that as the flow comes in from the sanitation district, it goes through microfiltration, which we just looked at, and then it goes to the next treatment step, reverse osmosis, which we'll talk about in a minute, and then the final treatment step, ultraviolet light with hydrogen peroxide, and then we add minerals back in because the water is so pure that we have to add minerals back in. And then it goes to two places, as you can see here on the screen. We inject it along the coast, about a third of the water that we produce, and that's to prevent seawater from intruding into the groundwater basin because our groundwater basin is connected to the ocean geologically. And then the, the large portion of the water, about three quarters of the water, is actually sent in a pipeline 15 miles north of here and sent to a series of recharge basins or lakes in the city of Anaheim where when we add the water into the basins, it naturally percolates or seeps into the ground by gravity and replenishes the groundwater. So the groundwater replenishment system provides two basic functions, protect the groundwater basin from seawater intrusion and then provide a source of replenishment water to help offset some of the other naturally occurring sources that are used to replenish the groundwater basin in Orange County. And now we're going to head to the microfiltration basement so you get a better view of all the equipment it takes to run the microfiltration process. So let's go. So here we are in the microfiltration basement. We were just standing about 25 feet above us and now we're down in the basement. The reason there's such a large basement facility under the microfiltration is that that allows us to receive the feed flow that we get from the Orange County Sanitation District by gravity and not have to pay the electrical cost to have it pumped over here. So all of the basins that we saw when we were standing up top, now we're standing towards the bottom of them and you can see how deep we are down in the basement. And it takes a whole series of pipes, as you see around me, to bring the water into this first step of the treatment. And basically when the water comes over from the sanitation district by gravity, fills these large blue pipes above me, and then it follows these stainless pipes into the basin. And so when you're standing up top and looking at the microfiltration process, you're seeing the actual microfiltration membrane sitting in the water to be treated, and the water level looks kind of static, like nothing's going on. But really what's happening is we're pulling the water out through the filter as clean water at the same rate it's coming in, all being controlled by a computer. So the water level looks kind of static. And then every 22 minutes, like we talked about when there's a backwash, and that's what you hear going on right now, the filters will self-clean and then we'll dump all of the contents out of the basin and take away all that fouling layer on the outside of the filter and send it back to the Orange County Sanitation District. So that's how we make the microfiltration system work. It takes a whole system of pipes and valves and you hear all the sounds because all of the valves run through compressed air so they open and close quickly. So it's a pretty complex process, but the whole goal is to get water into the filters and into the basins as quick as possible and out as treated water so that we can take the water to the next step, which is reverse osmosis. And that's where we're gonna head to next. So here we are at the second step of the treatment process at the groundwater replenishment system. This is what we call the reverse osmosis process or RO for short. We just came from the microfiltration process. Remember we talked about that that would remove some of the larger particles. Now we get into a thousand times 
higher level of filtration where we're gonna start to remove all of the dissolved organics, the salts, pharmaceuticals, emerging contaminants. The reverse osmosis is considered the workhorse of the treatment process. And what you see behind me is a unit, an individual unit consisting of these white fiberglass vessels that are eight inches in diameter. Each unit has 150 vessels and we have 27 of these units throughout the facility. Each unit can produce 5 million gallons a day of RO treated water. And inside each of these white tubes is seven reverse osmosis membranes. And unlike the microfiltration membranes that we saw earlier that had the hollow fibers, kind of like spaghetti-like fibers, instead we have these cartridges that have a fiberglass housing and if you were to cut one open, instead of a hollow fiber, they're flat sheets. So the way the reverse osmosis works is we introduce water from the end under pressure through the reverse osmosis membrane filter and the clean water will make its way through one of these sheets of membrane material and make its way to this hollow center where the clean water is accumulated. The water that didn't pass through or the contaminants will not make it to the center but make its way into the next set of membranes. There's seven membranes in a series inside each vessel. And at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is produce a clean water stream through the reverse osmosis. Unlike the microfiltration process, instead of having to self-clean or backwash every 22 minutes, this process, the water continuously goes through the filter, produces a clean stream, and produces what we call a concentrate stream or a waste stream. And the way that we operate our system is we can operate at a very high throughput or what we call 85% recovery, meaning for Every 100 gallons, it passes through the RO process, 85 comes out as clean water, and the other 15 comes out as a waste product. That's the waste product that we send back to the Orange County Sanitation District, and then it gets discharged into their ocean outfall. When the water leaves this process, the reverse osmosis, it has now been stripped of most of its organics and most of its salts and inorganics to the point where it's ultra pure. And after this step, there's one more step, and that's the ultraviolet light with hydrogen peroxide, or what we call advanced oxidation process. That's where we're gonna go to next. So here we are at the third major treatment step. This is called ultraviolet light with hydrogen peroxide, or it's also known as the advanced oxidation process, or AOP. After the water's gone through microfiltration, which we saw first, it then goes through reverse osmosis, which we just came from, and then the final major treatment steps, what we call the ultraviolet light with hydrogen peroxide. And what's going on is we're standing right here next to one of the trains. So we have 16 of these individual trains and you can see that the train itself consists of these three long steel vessels stacked on top of each other. What we're doing is the water is coming from the reverse osmosis process and we're dosing it or we're adding hydrogen peroxide to it at a four milligrams per liter of concentration. The water then goes across this chamber, up to the second chamber and across, and up to the third chamber and across. So while it's in the chamber, it's actually running over one of these glass sleeves. And inside each of these glass sleeves is what we call an ultraviolet or UV lamp. So this is a special light that will transmit through this glass sleeve and into the water. It's a special wavelength of light that will provide a disinfectant. So what's really happening is we're projecting a certain type of light that when it travels through the water, it will actually alter the DNA of the microorganisms that might have gotten through the first two treatment steps. Things like bacteria, viruses, protozoa, and it'll keep them from replicating by altering their DNA. So then they can't be infectious and they can't continue to replicate. In addition, when the ultraviolet light comes in contact with the hydrogen peroxide that's in the water, we form a chemical reaction, what we call advanced oxidation. So what we're doing is we're generating the OH ions, if you remember from your chemistry days, and really what we're simplified way of saying what we're trying to do is we're trying to break apart the oxygen bonds of some of these low molecular weight organics. There are some that are so small they can pass through even the reverse osmosis treatment. And that's what we want to try to address with this third treatment step. In addition, this third treatment step also provides a redundant barrier. So we want to have multiple barriers of protection throughout the treatment process. And there's two particular contaminants that are regulated that we find 
in the treated wastewater that comes to our facility that get addressed by this advanced oxidation process. One is NDMA, and it, the way that it's removed or converted to a more neutral byproduct is it needs high amounts of ultraviolet light to break it apart. So that's what this process provides. There's another contaminant called 1,4-dioxane that light alone will not break it apart or not neutralize it. In that case, it needs an oxidant, the hydrogen peroxide, and it needs that chemical reaction that we talked about to break apart its oxygen bonds. So that's a, an, an example of a contaminant where we need the full advanced oxidation process, the high amounts of ultraviolet light combined with the hydrogen peroxide. And so what you see behind me, inside each of these vessels is 144 of these lamps. And in one train that we see behind me, we can treat about 8.75 million gallons a day of water, almost 9 million gallons a day of water in one train. And in each chamber, there's 72 lamps on each end, or 144, or 432 lamps in the entire train itself, and we have 16 of them. And that allows us to produce 130 million gallons a day by spreading it across the 16 individual treatment trains. And so, now that you've seen the three major treatment steps, we're going to next take a look at what the water looked like before and after treatment and have a chance to taste it. So let's go on to the next step. And so here we are at what we call our sample sink station. That's a key part of the groundwater replenishment system tour. This is a sink that helps display what the water looked like before and after treatment. So if you take a look at the sinks that we have here, the middle sink here is what the water looks like after microfiltration. That was the first treatment step that we saw with the hollow fiber straws. This is what is going into the main treatment step, the reverse osmosis. This sink here represents what the water looks like after microfiltration, after reverse osmosis, and after ultraviolet light with hydrogen peroxide or advanced oxidation. And then the far sink here is everything that was removed by the reverse osmosis process. You could see that the change in color when we remove the contaminants versus what it looked like right before the reverse osmosis and after the reverse osmosis and the ultraviolet light with hydrogen peroxide. The water here is so pure that it's of distilled quality and is so pure that we'll actually add minerals back in in the form of calcium. But at this point, the water is ultra pure and you can drink it. And boy, does it taste good. A common question though that we get is, why can't we just serve this water directly to people's homes? Well, that's driven in large part because of the regulations in California. The project, like the groundwater replenishment system, is what we consider an indirect potable reuse project. So we're allowed to send the water into the groundwater basin where it will mix with native groundwater and then be pumped out later through a, a series of wells and sent to people's homes as drinking water. However, in the state of California, we do now have new regulations that would allow water similar to this that's been through this treatment process and a couple of extra treatment steps on top would then be able to be sent directly to people's homes or what we call direct potable reuse. The state of California just released regulations at the end of 2023 and they should be finalized in 2024. So there could come a day in the near future, in the next five to 10 years where water that's produced through a process similar to GWRS and with a couple extra steps could be sent directly to your home. And that's something that we're looking forward to as the next evolution in water recycling. Thank you for coming on the tour today and I hope you enjoyed it.